Nigeria, with a population of over 200 million people and most populated black nation in the world with abundant human and natural resources, turns plus one every October 1 each year. With successive administration trying so hard to bring a dividend of democracy to the common masses, most people still wallow in abject poverty. Social, economic, and political downturns is making Nigerians seek greener pasture elsewhere. Nepotism, bribery and corruption, social inequality, economic struggles and security concerns is making Nigeria uninhabitable. This was not the blueprint of our founding fathers that fought so hard for independence of the nation. The push for independence was fueled by growing nationalism in the 1940s and 1950s, led by prominent figures such as the likes of Nambi Azikwe, Abubakar Tafawa Balewa, or Bafemi. Awolowo, Anthony Enaholo, Habrat Macaulay, together they fought for the independence of Nigeria, having the vision that Nigeria would be among the greatest nations on planet Earth for the discovery of oil in 1956 at Olobiri, a small community in present-day Bayelsa State. Our founding fathers, in their wisdom and foresight, understood the potential that the discovery of oil had for Nigeria's growth and development. They recognized that this newfound resource could propel the country towards economic independence, modern infrastructure, and industrialization. However, despite a vision for a prosperous nation that did not fully anticipate or adequately prepare for the long term management of this valuable asset, to commemorate 64 years of Nigerians independence and a day of celebration and above all hope it is a moment to remember our past to appreciate our present and to recommit to the promise of a better future for our beloved country Nigeria our journey as a nation has been one of trials and triumphs challenges and victories for 64 years Nigeria has stood tall as a giant of Africa blessed with rich cultural diversity natural resources and above all a resilient and determined people from the oil rich niger delta to the expansive farmlands of the north from the vibrant market of lagos to the historical depths of edo we are a nation abundant in both potential and in spirit yet despite our wealth of resources and talent we find ourselves at a crossroad today our beloved nigeria faces deep seated challenges, economic hardship, insecurity, youth unemployment, and a broken political system. These issues, though daunting, do not define us. They are temporary and they are surmountable. At 64, Nigeria is not that young, but we are still evolving and still learning. But I firmly believe that our best days lie ahead of us. We have the capacity to reimagine our future to elevate our people out of poverty, to ensure that our children have access to quality education and to create a society where peace, progress, and prosperity are not just mere words, but are reality for all. We will do better. I believe we can do better by fostering accountability in our governance, ensuring that no Nigeria is left behind, and by embracing the diversity that has always been our greatest strength. We will stand up to those who have used our common wealth for personal gain. And we will work together to reclaim the promise of a Nigeria that works for every Nigeria. As we celebrate this 64th year of independence, let it serve as a call to action for all Nigerians, both at home and in the diaspora. Take this country to the next level. It is not the ex exclusive rights or duty of our leaders alone. Every Nigerian have a right, have a duty, have a responsibility in making Nigeria great. There's a decline in core moral values in Nigeria. And I can tell you that they have a way of affecting the growth and development of this nation. In Nigeria today, no honesty, no integrity, no compassion, no empathy, hard working has been trashed. And I can tell you, Nigeria will live where it is today to a greater height. Every parents, all religious leaders, the government have to synergize and promote core moral values in society. 
the lady foundation for what could have been an oil power economy transformation, but a lack of forward thinking policies and structures to manage oil wealth has left Nigeria vulnerable to the resource cause, a phenomenon where countries rich in natural resources fail to develop diversify sustain economies. Hence, in 1970, during the period of oil boom, the statement problem of Nigeria is not money but how to spend it is often attributed to General Yakubu Gawan who was Nigerian military head of state from 1966 to 1975 when Nigeria experienced a significant increase in revenue due to rising global oil prices. However, the reliance on oil revenues led to significant challenges while oil became the backbone of the economy contributing to over 90% of Nigerians export earnings. It is also resulted in a lack of diversification. Older sectors such as agriculture and manufacturing were neglected, making the economy vulnerable to fluctuations in global oil prices. The 1960s were characterized by political instabilities with a lack of consensus among Nigerians' diverse ethnic groups. The competition for power amongst major ethnic groups vis-a-vis Igbo, Yoruba and Hawuze Fulani led to political strife. Happy 64th independence to this country, Nigeria. If Nigeria were to be a human being at the age of 64, which we say is the right age, and we are still battling with mundane things like education, infrastructure, economy, here and there. As we speak, there's unprecedented hunger in the land, starvation. To say the least, as far as education is concerned, Nigeria is almost abysmal, as if it does not exist. The leadership over the years have not shown any deliberate attempt to ensure that our children will have a good education. And to have a good education in the first instance, you draw inspiration from the way you handle the various teachers and lecturers across the board. Very soon, ASU is threatening to go on strike again. The government is paying key gloves towards addressing some basic things. An agreement we have reached since 2009 up to now, you have not made any frantic effort towards addressing it. Is it infrastructure? You will see the dilapidated roads. No wonder politicians boast of giving us roads, giving us electricity, as if it is a new invention. So governments over the years of this country, various leaderships, they have not really shown that interest in good governance and by that the progress and development of this country. As we speak now, the progress of this country is on the reverse gear and we don't know where it's going to lead us to. For formalities we say happy independence. God has blessed this country. I'm in Nigeria. There's all nations of the world have their own deficiency. They have their own uh, challenges and all of that that doesn't mean we time to celebrate we should begin to mourn or we should remain money because the system is, uh, is lopsided because the, the country's uh, leadership is going through a lot of uh, decomposition and all of that we should look beyond the deficiency we should look beyond the insecurity of course the security of the country is important and uh, the other area, other facet of the economy is important in terms of stability and all of that. But let us look beyond all of that. Let's celebrate ourselves. It doesn't mean because you have sword on your leg, you will, not, you will not smile again. It doesn't mean because you are having pain on your back or on your part of your body, you will not celebrate when you are supposed to celebrate. The first general elections in 1959 saw the emergence of a fragile coalition government which struggles to address the aspirations of all Nigerians. As political discontent grew, so did insecurity. The country faced increasing violence, including ethnic clashes and riots, as different groups vied for power and representation. The West Nigerian crisis of 1962, which stemmed from dispute over regional election, exemplified this instability 
instability and highlighted the deepening divisions within the country. The early post-independence period was filled with optimism, but political instability soon followed marked a military coup and civil war from 1967 to 1970. In 1963, Nigeria became a republic, but the hopes for a unified nation were overshadowed by further political strife. The tensions accumulated in the military coup in January 1966 resulted in the assassination of Prime Minister Sir Abubakar Tafawa Balewa and several other political leaders plunging the country into chaos. This period of insecurity laid the groundwork for future conflicts including the Nigerian Civil War. The event from 1960 to 1964 underscored the urgent need for national cohesion and inclusive governance to address the diverse interests of Nigerians' population. Insecurity in Nigeria has evolved since the country's independence in 1960, becoming a significant challenge that affects various aspects of our lives. Today, Nigeria faces multiple security threats, each with its root cause and implications. Some years ago, you see most Nigerians that are eager to buy food, to buy things to celebrate. But now, if you make mention of that, it's going to be disastrous because most of the, you know, the citizens, they are disappointed and they are terribly angry. So I don't really see this. And then, big deal to celebrate though we are happy that the country is still one but unfortunately you know we are not there yet it's our independence day and it's a big deal for us it's a time to reflect on the past to assess the present to envisage a brighter future for our nation for our citizens and um, it's it's been six to four years of growth of lessons learned of mistakes and um also a good number of achievements it's not being all bad whether we like it or not we all keep talking about how bad government is but even you as an individual if you're put in that seat of power will you do better are you sure so let nigerians use this opportunity to reflect on themselves and ask themselves how much they are also doing for the nation don't be too focused on what the nation is doing for you and that will go a long way in making us all better persons and I'll also say that we have some challenges that our government must focus on. Two pressing challenges for me. Number one is insecurity. It's been babied for too long. It's been pampered. And it's grown into such a thriving business that those who are benefiting from insecurity do not even want insecurity to stop. But it has to be dealt with heads on. From the headsmen attacks in the farms, which is one of the reasons why food is so expensive. I'm not even going to talk about power or fuel, which is also another cost. But we can start from ensuring our farms are safe, um, our roads are safe. People aren't just kidnapped. You wake up in the morning, you come out of your house, even when you're not a rich person. It used to be a business for the rich when we were growing up watching movies. But now just about anybody can be kidnapped and then the, the you're asked to pay ransom. You can start negotiations for as much as 14 million and then even beat the price to as little as 200,000. And you might not even find the person alive. So insecurity has really been nurtured and we have to put a stop to it. Government must fight it head turn. And at the same time, we need to begin to analyze the economic reforms and policies that are put in place. Are they really fixing the economic situations? Are they really addressing the economic woes of our nation? Or you're leaving the citizens even more hungry. Nigerians are very, very hungry. There's no food. We are going through a lot. Government needs to just help us. Things are too expensive in the markets. Your house rent is on the rise. Your salaries are not really increasing. 70,000 naira minimum wage is not going to do much for transport alone. Top less of feeding, clothing, housing, education. So we need a whole lot more from our government. And um, I'm very positive that the future is brighter. The future is clearer. And it's just going to be a happy celebration for us. You know what to do so that the citizens can start smiling. Things are not, uh, though it might be gloomy now, but our hope is that the future is bright if we continue with democracy. Because it might take a very long time, but one thing is certain, Nigerians will smile again. It might not be so rosy now because of the, the process, but I know for sure that hope 
have lights at the end of the tunnel. We must also want to at least also uh, salute and celebrate the leaders of this democracy, our four uh, forefathers and leaders who raised that motion in the year 1958, which was which converted to 1960. Here on an overview of the current insecurity situation we have in Nigeria, Boko Haram. Boko Haram, an extremist group, emerged in the northeast in the early 2000s and has since engaged in a brutal insurgence. Their aim is to establish an Islamic state and their tactics have included bombings, mass kidnapping, notably the abduction of over 200 school girls in Chibok in 2014. The attacks of military and civilian target, despite effort by the Nigerian military, and international support, the group remains active, causing widespread displacement and sufferings. Banditry and kidnapping. In recent years, Nigeria has witnessed a surge in banditry, particularly in the northwest and north central region. And groups often referred to as bandit engage in mass kidnappings for ransom, attacking villages and stealing livestock. This has led to a climate of fear and insecurity, forcing many communities to flee their homes and disrupting local economies. Herders farmers conflicts. Conflicts between herders, primarily Fulanese and farmers over from various ethnic groups, has escalated due to competition over land and resources, exacerbated by climate change and desertification. Uh, these clashes often result in loss of life and property, further restraining relations between the different ethnic groups and contributing to regional insecurity. Nigeria has been able to successfully transit from the military era to a democratic era, and that is one of the successful gains that we have gained in Nigeria, whereby Nigerians chooses who becomes their leader by themselves. The only challenges that we have so far in this. Uh, 64 years of our independence is the electoral umpire. Nigeria, Nigerian leadership should do their best to strengthen our electoral umpire, which is INEC, to empower them with all they need to be able to conduct free, fair, and credible elections. This is a country that is blessed with so much uh, mineral resources and what have you, but the problem we have had over time is the issue of leadership. Uh, Nigeria seems to have issue with managing our resources, managing our common patrimony, put it together, our expertise, uh, you know, in order to revolutionize and to have a better headway as a nation. Uh, so uh, the, the problem in Nigeria practically is mismanagement by, uh, on, on culture, the leadership system. And I think that the solution is that we need to start retraining our leaders. We need to start, you know, having a new vision, leaders with new vision, leaders with prospect, and leaders that understand the socio-economic problem of this nation, and leaders that can actually, you know, put their hands together and, uh, and do the needful. We need leaders who will come to the realization that sovereign power belongs to the people. The people is the utmost importance to every government. We need, we need leaders... With the fear of God, leaders that believe that without the people, they are nothing. And the reason why they exist, the reason why they are leaders, is actually because of the people. We need leaders. Ethnic and sectarian violence. Ethnic and religious tension have led to violence in several regions, particularly in the Middle Belt. Clashes between different ethnic groups over land resources and political power continue to occur, often resulting in significant casualties and displacement. Militancy in the Niger Delta. Although the intensity of militancy has decreased since 2000, group in the Niger Delta still engage in sabotage of oil infrastructure and demand greater control over local resources. The region remains volatile due to environmental degradation and economic neglect. Let. Urban crime and tourism. Urban areas, including major cities like Lagos and Abuja, face rising crime rates, including armed robbery, carjacking, and cyber crimes. Additionally, terrorist groups such as ISIS affiliated cells have been reported in parts of the country, raising concerns about the expansion of terrorism beyond the northeast. Weak governance and corruption. Weak governance, lack of 
of effective law enforcement and high levels of corruption as exacerbate Nigerian security challenges. The inability of the government to effectively respond to this threat has led to a crisis of confidence among the populace. Internal displacement. The combined effect of these security challenges have resulted in millions of internally displaced persons (IDPs) across the country. According to a report, Nigeria has one of the highest number of IDPs in the world, with many living in precarious conditions in camps or with host communities. Despite these challenges, Nigeria remains a prominent and influential country in Africa, with a population exceeding over 200 million people, making it the most populous country on the continent and the seventh most populous in the world. The country has seen significant growth in sectors like telecommunications, Nollywood, film industry, fintech, and agriculture. Nigeria remains Africa's largest economy, driven largely by its oil and gas resources. The country is one of the top oil producers in the world, with oil export accounting for a significant portion of national revenue. However, this over-reliance on oil has often made the economy vulnerable to global price fluctuations. Recent efforts to diversify the economy into sectors like agriculture, telecommunications, and technology are gradually reading results. Despite its vast potential, Nigeria continues to grapple with economic challenges. High unemployment rates, inflation, and a large informal sector contribute to a complex economic environment. Additionally, the country's infrastructure deficit, particularly in power supply and transportation, hampers industrial growth and development. Yet, the rise of Nigerian tech industry, often referred to as Silicon Savannah, and the vibrant entrepreneurial spirit of Nigerian youths offer hope for a more diversified and resilient economy. Cultural influence and power of the youths. Nigerian influence extends far beyond its borders thanks to its rich cultural heritage and vibrant art scene. The Nigerian film industry in Hollywood is one of the largest in the world, producing thousands of films annually and earning global recognition. Similarly, Nigerian music led by artists like Bonner Boy, David Doe, Whiskey, Harry Song, you just name it, dominate Afrobeat scenes and enjoy widespread international acclaim. A key driver of Nigerian's culture and economic future is its youth population with over 60% of its over 200 million people under the age of 25. Nigeria is home to one of the world's largest youth population. This demographic presents both opportunities and challenges. Why young Nigerians are at the forefront of technological innovation and cultural expression. High youth unemployment and inadequate access of quality education remains significant issue. We may not be where we ought to be as a nation, but we are not where we used to be. Yes, we have numerous challenges ranging from economic, social, political, security, just name it. But I believe that with hard work, resilience, perseverance, loyalty, patriotism, and of course putting all our hearts, spirit, soul, and body to make Nigeria we are great again. We will definitely get there. Wilson Omasho reporting.